Hi, I'm Hoodie here, and today I'm back in New Dwarf City to build myself a labyrinth. In Dwarf Fortress, building something in Fortress mode that you plan on visiting in Adventure mode is a time-honored tradition. I've done it a couple times on this channel, returning to the scene of my accidental necromancer imprisonment, and braving the dangers of a haunted house of my own creation, but never has it been such a shot in the dark. Adventure mode seems at least a year away, and in that time there are no guarantees that that version of the game will be compatible with this world, or that this world won't have corrupted, or even that my computer won't have exploded into a million pieces to protest being used for video editing. On top of that, there is the inherent wibbledy wobbledyness of retiring a fortress, and yes, that is the most accurate term. Sometimes you retire with a necromancer safely locked away in a prison, and then you find out he somehow died of starvation. And then sometimes you lock a whole town's worth of people in the walls, and a decade later they're still chatting. Retirement can do strange things to a fortress. Despite the risks, I still felt like now was the perfect time to build myself a labyrinth, because I need to forget the layout of it before I can return if I want the full experience. The layout was something that I struggled with quite a bit initially. I had to scrap it twice as I figured out how I wanted it to look, but it eventually came together to resemble something vaguely maze-like. Once it was dug out, I made some final tweaks to the design to even out the edges, and then began constructing cages and mechanisms so that we could build cage traps to capture enemies for the labyrinth. I was having visions of minotaurs roaming the halls and Eden lurking around corners, but when an Eden actually arrived at my fortress, I hadn't had a chance to build any cage traps yet, and so we were forced to kill him. With the cages finally up, we managed to snag a couple of snatchers and a human before another ideal monster came my way. A rock. A giant bird may not seem ideal for a subterranean labyrinth, but they are vicious and formidable opponents. So formidable, in fact, that she flew right over the cage traps I had placed and we were forced to fight her in a hallway. Oh well. We built a roof in case another rock decided to visit, and one of my dwarves proved themselves useful by making the most of a bad situation by creating an artifact rock leather shield. After some more waiting, and with some more invaders captured, it felt like it was time to put together a little test while waiting for bigger and better things to come and so I put a Goblin Snatcher and three Coyotes into the Labyrinth. When I released them, I learned a valuable lesson. Someone in the Labyrinth, ideally everyone, but at least someone, has to be aggressive, because it seemed like everyone I had chosen went out of their way to get as far away from everyone else as possible, and it wasn't particularly interesting to watch. I left the Coyotes and the Snatcher to their business, while I waited around capturing humans and goblins as they took turns sieging me. Their forces grew each time they returned, but between the cages and the growing power of the peasant army, they stood no chance. Some dwarves died to sieges, others were simply crushed when I neglectfully triggered the Atom Smasher, but along with all the death came life, in the form of three coyote pups born in the labyrinth. For a while, we didn't do anything new, and the whole fort was about managing strange moods and capturing invaders in cages, until finally I decided that our stock of prisoners had grown so large that we could surely create a perfectly reasonable labyrinth with what we had. Of course, we first had to kill the members of the labyrinth test, and then clean the labyrinth. But with that out of the way, we started stocking it with everything it would need to be fully operational. Weapons, artifacts, and cages containing all kinds of prisoners. The plan for the labyrinth was that when the prisoners were released, the bridges for each section would be raised, and so each section could have its own distinct group. At the east end of the labyrinth were the humans, in the north, coyotes, in the south, goblin child snatchers, and in the large western section were the goblin soldiers. Some of the sections were also given theming, like a statue of a goblin torturing a dwarf over here, or of a human and a dwarf fighting each other over here. With the labyrinth filled, and the cages linked up to a release lever, I proceeded to record for the next 40 minutes without capturing the game. Barring visual proof of what happened, here is what the cemetery looked like after those 40 minutes. Fifteen dwarves had died while fighting off a goblin siege, and all because I had forgotten to turn outdoor refuse hauling off when we were being attacked. Between not recording gameplay for 40 minutes, and letting 15 dwarves die due to negligence, it may seem like I wasn't quite in my right mind, but me being me, I wasn't quite that aware, and I decided that right then was the perfect time to cut the ribbon on the labyrinth. And so I locked the room off, released the prisoners, and immediately realized I hadn't raised the bridges between each section, which meant that the labyrinth immediately turned into a turf war, first between goblins and coyotes, and then between goblins and humans. In this game of rock, paper, scissors, I have to imagine that coyotes are human kryptonite, because the goblins dealt with them easily before being totally wiped out by the humans. Just when it seemed like my plan couldn't get any more off the rails, 
a rather large human army arrived, looking to extort me. The labyrinth is built and ready to go, though a little bit low on enemies, but whether or not we survive long enough to fix that will have to be determined next time. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.